The gospel, according to Urban Rider, dictates that you can have both style and substance in equal measure. So naturally, when a product comes out that nails that brief on both fronts, we get very, very excited indeed. Here we have, for you lovely people today, the showy Glamster. This is a helmet that's for release in the early part of spring 2020, but we have a product sample here to show you. Shoei as a brand are one of the helmet manufacturers with the most universal respect when it comes to the technical prowess of the helmets they produce. But traditionally, they have only really dipped their toe in a very small way into the retro styled part of the market that we tend to cater to. The RYD was a sort of very vague predecessor to this, but it didn't go very far at all in the aesthetics. It had a couple of tiny details that maybe were slightly catering to our part of the market, but nevertheless, I still invested in a Sherry RYD as my day-to-day -day helmet because I really wanted a Sherry helmet for my practical day-to-day -day riding over my other retro lids, which I use more for high days and holidays. And that's the thing, out of most of the helmets that we offer, there actually aren't that many that I would turn to and say, this would be my choice out of anything on the market for a ride in the winter at motorway speeds in bad weather on a loud bike. And that's a shame what we need is something that does absolutely everything that the more practical helmets do, but in the package that appeals more to the urban rider aesthetic. And the Shoei Glamster absolutely nails that head on. This is a helmet that's been a long time coming. We have been saying since for ages, you need to get into this market, produce the same wonderful winning formula, but just make something a little bit less racy looking. And in the Glamster, I think they've done a great job in creating something that's not too over stylized, but just has some really cool and subtle features to make it something that I think fits really neatly into our segment. So the main thing that we're gonna notice about this then are these horizontal vents either side of the central point on the chin section. These give it a nice retro look that I think would work pretty universally across the bikes and riding styles that we cater to. In terms of the technical side though, this doesn't make any concessions really when it comes to achieving all the same tick boxes that we want from our ideal showy helmet. So this is a five layered AIM shell, which is what you normally get with Shoei, which is a mixture of composite and organic fibers that is incredibly strong, incredibly lightweight, and has a nice flexibility to it as well. And this enables the helmet's profile to be super compact. This is a great thing from a style point. And if you stay tuned and subscribe to our channel, you'll see in our next video, which is gonna be on our top five retro full face helmets, and we were waiting for this one to come in. So there is a big divergence between the smallest and the largest in terms of the shell profiles within the sector. And the Shoei being just about as small as any full face helmet I've seen in any part of the marketplace. This is great because it means it's compact, it's light, and it looks wonderful. There is arguably a very small concession to be made then in terms of sound insulation over some of the slightly chunkier and more substantial ones by virtue of the fact there is less sound proofing to be had via the helmet itself. But having used the RYD, which is a predecessor sort of to this helmet, I have no problems at all with the quality of soundproofing it has on offer. I use it day to day on a quite noisy bike. And for me, it's absolutely fine. If you are more sensitive in terms of your oral sensitivity than that, then you need to get earplugs and I don't see there being a problem either way. So this helmet really does a great job when it comes to that lightness. And interesting to note, at this point, there is also an Arai being released pretty much exactly at the same time, which is not that surprising. These two brands are very, very similar in a lot of people's minds and they tend to do the same things in the marketplace. So they've obviously been copying each other over their shoulders. We're not sure who was first, but either way, the Arai is gonna come out slightly before the Glamster does. But it's quite interesting to note it's essentially aiming for the same part of the market, but in a quite different way. So the same helmet in the same size weighs 400 grams more in the Arai. It's actually 50 pounds more as well in the plain colors. And as well as that, it is just substantially larger. Now that's not to say it's inherently worse. There will be people who prefer the more substantial feel and really, I suppose, probably are going for that day-to-day -day soundproofing element over what the Glamster offers. But for me, it's a compelling argument towards the Shoei at a lower price point being lighter and lower profiled. I think that the Arai maybe looks just a little bit more that kind of custom cruiser part of the market resembling maybe a Simpson Bandit, whereas something like this is a little bit more neutral and I think it's going to have a slightly wider appeal. Do leave us your comments and thoughts on that though in the section below. It's always interesting to hear what you guys think about those points. But back to the Glamster, this comes in a number of plain colors as we normally see from Shoei's helmets in at 399 and it comes in at 499, so an extra 100 pounds if you go for the graphic versions, which is quite a jump. But in terms of the standard price point for a Shoei helmet, we're in the right point of the price spectrum and compared to a lot of the other helmets that this is up against in the marketplace, this is also pretty par for the course too. 
And really with the Sherry, you're getting something that you can't with some of the others when it comes to these technical spec features. So the only real down point to the helmet, as I see it, is in the name, which uh, I'm sure you've already started typing in the comment section before I've mentioned it. It's pretty horrendous, um, but if that's the only bad point about the helmet, I think we can forgive it. But going for a fusion of the words glamorous and hipster in the name of a product is just awful. It's probably the worst thing we've seen in 15 years of poor product naming decisions, but we love the helmet apart from that. And thank God it's not written on the helmet. A lot of the showy lids, they say, what the name of the helmet is in terms of the model somewhere on the back but thankfully that is not the case when it comes to the glamster and that's a great point so the helmet's profile is pretty neutral it has that same kind of lip at the back that we saw on the open face jo so that theme has been continued across but otherwise it is these retro vents on the side that give it that slightly more appealing edge for someone like me in our part of the market. I would love to have this helmet when it comes out. And uh, even though I've just invested in the RYD about a year ago, I think this will have to replace it because it's spot on in terms of what I want looks wise. So this has really practical features that a lot of the retro lids in our part of the market don't. One of the big ones being the visor itself. So usually we are accustomed to not having the very best performing visor seals from some of the lids that we offer because concessions are made when it comes to achieving the right looks and profile to create that sort of more classic inspired design. Showy won't do that though. This has a wonderful seal around the edge and this also of course helps with sound insulation too. This has a quality visor which is UV resistant. It also comes included at the price in the box with the pin lock insert. Pin lock works like double glazing. It absorbs the moisture as well. So it's essentially the surest way to keep fog out on those cold, damp days. And this is a massive thing. It was a revolution when I got my RYD. I can't believe I hadn't had a helmet with a visor that actually didn't fog up before. But once you've had one, you will never go back and you'll wonder why you don't have it on every single helmet you own. So it's wonderful to see that that comes with it and it fits really nicely around the aperture so that you're not gonna notice it too much either. So it doesn't look like a technical modern race helmet would. There's also the vents, which are really practical and work easily. So on the forehead, on the central section, this can be operated easily with gloves on on the go. And the actual shell itself, the EPS liner, has the channels carved out of it with the airflow points. So it goes through the helmet nicely and evenly dispersing the ventilation if you want it to. And if you don't, you simply close that back up. These ones on the side are always in the open position. And again, there are channels just to release it into that chin section. Because they're actually at the side rather than at the front, they're not gonna funnel everything. So you don't have to worry too much on the colder days about getting unwanted airflow in. It's simply gonna keep a degree of fresh air coming in. And I think that's a good thing for me. Again, personally, over the Arai, which is at the front, face on, I think you're gonna get potentially moisture in there and just always have a considerable degree more airflow. Whereas being on the side, it's going to simply create back pressure to create the airflow, I think, more than it is force its way through. So maybe slightly more practical, again, from that point of view. The visor itself is operated by the traditional Sherry latch system where you push this forwards and it's got a nice sturdy chunky element to it there so you can again operate this with gloves on and it has ratcheted points on the way up so this can be stuck into position. You notice as well the side pods here, they are a metal which is nice so a lot of the Sherry's tend to have something more plasticky and a little bit more modern looking. This again may be slightly more retro inspired in that respect and a nice point either way. So when this is closed, I said really good seal around the visor. On the actual inside of the helmet, we have something really good as well, which we saw with the RYD, which was the emergency quick release system on the cheek pads. So if, God forbid, you were to have a bad crash and you were lying on the floor and paramedics needed to remove your helmet, if you don't have this system, then you don't really have a lot of options. Uh, if you want to get the helmet off the head, it's quite difficult. Of course, it's really snugly encapsulating your head. So having this is a great thing. So all you do is you get these red toggles, you pull in a very downward motion and it releases without any real obstruction to the head itself. And of course, taking this inch thick padding out either side means that there's now enough room to neatly, gently and carefully slide this away and prevent any further damage to your neck. So that's a really good thing to see and it's very reassuring to have that in a retro helmet. The lining, of course, is therefore removable via these uh, cheek pads being removed and the actual top part of the lining can come out as well. So it's washable, which is nice and practical. And we also have this double D-ring mechanism, which is the safest and most secure way for doing the helmet up. So again, good points there too. 
So essentially, therefore, the Glamster marks a real high point in our market of technical prowess, perhaps a low point for the name, but we're going to forgive that. And I'm really excited to see this come in. I would love to know what you guys think about it. Your thoughts, comments, and feedback are always much appreciated. So leave that in the section below. And do stay tuned to be the first to find out about the world's finest riding gear. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.